Endless Lake is the kind of game that I thoroughly enjoyed, hated every moment of, will look back on fondly, and hope to never play again. The game is, I suspect, not actually any fun at all, but it draws so heavily on the reward center of the brain that you just can't help but not stop playing it. Which means if you're an old school arcade gamer like I am, and pretty much the only enjoyment left in life for you is high scores in video games, then this game's going to really play on your emotions and be more addictive than fail blog videos. It's so difficult and yet so easy that every single time you die, it feels like you should have been able to do just a little bit better. Which means if you fall short of your high score, you instantly hit play again because you're convinced you can beat it. And even if you actually get a high score, once you die, you feel like you could have gone longer and immediately try to top it. But also the game is sort of slow moving with no save points, so to build back up to the high score you got before, it can take a long time especially if you die just before getting to it and have to work back up to that again. The game is a total time vacuum. I wasted more time playing this game than I would have wasted waiting in line at the DMV. So let's talk about the gameplay and the controls. The controls are rather simple. You click to jump and you double click to double jump. Just like the entire world's populace in 1975 following the release of Jaws, the goal of the game is to stay out of the water. If you fall into the water, you die and you didn't get your high score, so you have to try again, and again, and again, and again. It probably doesn't sound that different from any of the other billions of endless scrolling platform runner games, and it's probably not. But this game does have a few interesting draw cards to it. Firstly, as mentioned, its game speed, difficulty, and score is perfectly paced to be just the most addictive thing ever. Secondly, and more importantly, however, is the multi-ball aspect. Why I call it this is because it kind of functions a lot like pinball. Every time your character runs through a purple door, it's duplicated into multiple more characters, all of which you have to keep track of, and all of which add to your score as if they're their own character. Just like in pinball, it's not an issue if you lose any of these extra characters, and only becomes an issue, ending the game, if you run out of all the characters, just as if you were to run out of all the balls during a multi-ball in pinball. However, once again, just like in Pinball, actually splitting your attention to the multiple characters rather than just focusing on the one can really trip you up instantly, and it's not uncommon while trying to keep them all alive that you actually lose them all. I think it's probably this additional bit of risk and reward that really made the game for me and distinguished it from many of the other same types of game that I've played before. It is interesting, however, that while I think the game might speed up a little, it's not really much that you notice, and at no point do you ever really lose because you weren't able to keep up with the speed of the game. It's more that you do lose because you foolishly misjudge a jump, which happened far too often, or that you get tripped up while trying to track all of your characters. And further, while the Endless Lake map is randomized, it does continuously repeat sections of the map, so it's more of a randomized order of repeating patterns, instead of it being at complete random. What this means is you'll probably get tripped up by a certain area, learn how to get through it, and then just repeat that series of clicks next time that section of the map appears. Why I think this is worth mentioning is because I don't think my score was getting better because I was getting better at the game in the sense that I was getting better at the controls or anything, which kind of makes this game stand out again from a lot of the runner games I've done, because rather than my skill increasing because I was getting in the zone or getting used to the controls or my reflexes were getting accustomed to it or anything like that, it wasn't a skill base I was acquiring to better my score, but but instead a familiarity with the repeating patterns and how best to get through them. This was to such a degree that I would probably hesitate to actually classify this as a reflex based game, but instead a pattern recognition and memory game. In regards to the graphics in the game, I have slightly mixed feelings. When I first started playing the game, I thought the graphics were beautiful. I thought it was very surrealist and really rather pretty. However, after playing the game for several hours, I was completely sick of the graphics and hated them immensely. The main issue with the graphics is the complete lack of variety. No matter how far you go in the game, nothing at all changes. Which I suppose is kind of the point being an endless lake and all, but I really wish it changed up a little, even if it was just the color of the lake changing from blue to red, or if there was a daytime nighttime cycle. I mean, come on, Dino Jump 2.0 has a nighttime daytime cycle, so you should at least be able to put that in Endless Lake. There is sort of a variety in the character because you can pick up coins in the game and every time you get 2,000 coins you can buy a new character skin, but unfortunately it's only just that, it's just a character skin and they don't seem to perform any differently aside from each having their own annoying sound effect. Weirdly enough, I think this would have been more rewarding if, instead of them all being 2,000 points and you can buy any of them at the very start, they had an increasing cost or you had to unlock one before you could unlock the next one. As 
as it was, however, it was just a waste of time, and I really don't feel like I got anything out of unlocking all the characters. So there you have it, Endless Lake. You'll probably both love it and hate it, and if you're into this sort of game, it's definitely worth checking out, because as far as this sort of game goes, this version of it's been done very well. If you want to give a shot at the game yourself, I'll put a link to it in the description, and if you film yourself beating my high score, put it up on YouTube, put a link to it in the comments, or tweet it to me, or message to me, or whatever so I can find out about it, and I'll give it a shout out next time I do one of these kinds of videos. But with all of that said and done, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.